Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, sort of-ish. As we're playing as Arizona, the Republic of Arizona, and we're have, we have uh, led by a guy named Barry Goldwater. This guy, I've never heard of him before. Born in Phoenix, 1909, so. Um, but we've got Arizona to arms. Come all ye family men, work and rancher to the call of arms, where Arizona freedom, freedom and spirit must be fought for, and the Tree of Liberty once more yearns for the blood of tyrants and invaders. Scavenge some guns. The Johnson family next door has a shotgun. Well, the Doles up in town have a cold, but this just won't do. We must unlock the sheriff's and National Guard's old lockers and armies to continue the fight abroad. Here. So, uh, oh, look at that. Thought we were going to go with Ray's SWLF militias. It was us Yanks who truly settled this land for a way to break the soil and build the homes. While the Mexicans ran things down south in fancy villas. So I've gathered those willing to fight for the southwest. So, um, I'll be honest here. Uh, I was building up a pretty strong Mexico, as you can see from what we've done here. And the car, I made sure they did well. Let's see what happens in this campaign, but... Um, this is my first time playing as Arizona, so... And we're going to try to go and get the Socialist Path as well. Because why not? We have one guide. So we want to go how to get Anarchist Arizona. Revolt from, from Mexico after the Reconquista. And part, wait for the Bisbee deportation event. And choose in any other events for Goldwater to extend martial law and drift authoritarianism. Extend martial law and drift authoritarianism. So, we're just going to sp spread out as much and as fast as we possibly can. I'm not sure what the requirements are for us to, like, survive against Mexico. But, uh, we're going to Austin, Texas. I really have no idea. Also, I deleted all their divisions just because I thought this would be impossible to do. And it might just be, so. And besides, this is Kaiser Redux. I really don't care. You do whatever you want, Kaiser Redux, for the most part. So, uh, we have no manpower, of course. And, uh, we have a national spirit here. Extremism in the defense of liberty. More speed, less organization. Better attrition for us. Better supply consumption, planning speed. Daily paternal autocrat support and defense bonus against the country. Cool. So, uh, like I said, this is my first time playing through this. Uh, so I have no idea what to expect at all. Really, so. um, Arizona Rangers. Recruit WCC remnants. Although the Civil War resulted in many good sons turning upon each other in the Rocky Mountains, they since returned and are yearning for good old American scrap with the external invaders. That's right. Not sure. Oh, we did find some enemies here. So how do we, how do we win here? Do we have to capitulate Mexico? Sure, guys, we'll take stuff if you got convoys for it. I don't know if we really do have it, but whatever. Salt Lake City, yes, we got a lot of Mormons. So when can we peace out? So we have all this stuff. We can uh. Kneel before the last of the vaqueros in Mexico. The PLM IWW rides out. We can, we can pop it at them, but. Bow before the true cowboys in Texas. Set up the syndicates. Hmm. Pursue peace with the Union State. Cowpokes in here, huh? Oh, alright. And of course, we just got the sound of super, uh, super fans, but we don't really care about that right now. Actually beating them here, look at that. Oh, they're, they're Pancho Villa, huh? Finally beat Pancho Villa. Sure, we don't get the convoys for it, but we'll take it. Actually, we do have the convoys for it, nice. So do we do we actually have to conquer Mexico? Like, is there supposed to be like a scripted peace dealer? I have literally no idea. I guess Lithuania, I guess. Two more divisions, throw them on. And then uh, Arizona Rangers. A popular war tells whispering throughout Arizona of a ranger riding upon the town of Agua Fria with a big iron on his hip. Oh, look at this. There to take the bandito named Mexican Red back alive or maybe dead again. The Guns of Liberty. When we put out our call for loyal patrons to share their firearms, the SL SWLF, we expected to receive antiquated weapons and we were satisfied when old men brought their old Winchester rifles and called peacemakers. Former state marshals brought out. Stashed 1918 Brownings and retired police officers arrived at the ga gathering points with their official police revolvers, however. it has been an unexpected consequence of our call to arms. An elderly man on horseback called into town one morning, unlimiting it from his horse and offered to SWLF recruiting officers. At a moment, the men realized they were looking at a six-pounder field gun, polishing it like the day it was made. The man claimed that his father returned from the Mexico-American War with an artillery piece and that it had been maintained for almost 100 years for a situation just like this. The recruiter is dumbstruck by the story, except for the cannon on behalf of the rebellion. Sure, an artillery piece which is so old has no place on the battlefield, but it seems so foolish to waste such a monument to American victory. Refit and ship to the front. Looking nice outside the state legislature. 
Ooh, we already have enough already. That's pretty good. Add it to the front lines. Because why not? Uh, more guns, I guess. Artillery, sport equipment, motorized, all the good stuff, you know. Uh, what's gonna do here? Propaganda efforts. They're doing stuff over there in Europe, which we don't give a darn about. Oh, naval decisions course too. Um, army XP that'd be pretty decent to get. Do we get some daily? Eh, we get some every day. That's not bad. We don't really need to use political power for all of that. Let's see who we have here though. Eventually, they're popping out more divisions though, which is unfortunate for us. But seriously, when do we peace out with them? The man of golden water. The Mexican army swarmed across the unguarded border, and the state government hid away all in all essence shatter. We're now for a single man rallied once more by meeting them in person. Now Goldwater appears like a patron saint with the task of ensuring Arizona lives on as a free land once more. As WLF emergency government, now is the desperate times. As we require all hands on deck to fend off the Mexican fury. We require National Guardsmen and statesmen elect to guard our vessel through these roaring currents and into a calm harbor. Arizona guerrilla war. A vast southern army is upon us. We cannot beat them in open battle. Instead, we shall bleed them in the valleys and hills. To every Mexican mother dreads the idea of sending her son to die upon the sites of freed men fighting for the state, use her terrain. The plateaus, valleys, and curving hills of Arizona shall be an unconquerable land. As no army can track our fighters down or oppose a vast rival fire that shall await them from high ground, the Mexican army shall grow hungry and thirsty to suppliers or supplies are raided by truck and horse. Yeah. Independence secured. The Mexican finally relented. Their arms have given up and gone home. The amount of blood spilled is no longer worth it, and we have taught them in fear to tread. Arizona's free. Eventually, we'll have state of the SWLF government. Now they're no longer upon immediate distress. We must discuss among ourselves if we should give up the power to more traditional state government and representation. Peace. All over Arizona, the guns are beginning to fall silent with the Mexican army retreating over the Patagonia Mountains and along Interstate 19. It's beginning to look like Goldwater's revolt has succeeded. Though there's still Mexican holdouts close to the borders, with the supply lines cut and the collaborators being rounded up for deportation, they aren't expected to last much longer. With SWLF provisional government establishing control across the state and beginning reconstruction efforts, people are beginning to expect a return to normalcy and democracy. Goldwater so far continue with the SWLF provisional government and with his growing status as a war hero and liberator, some are beginning to worry what would happen when the emergency government is no longer needed. Freedom at last, right? So, right, I went back and said not to take out and delete all the divisions for the most part, but, um, see what, what the actual war would be like, but the state of the government, of course. And I wonder if we could get more states here. That'd be really nice if we could. Uh, do we have anything else here? No, we don't have anything like that. Whatever. And we're gonna go to early mobilization. Because we want to build roads, I guess. Um, so let's see what happens. As a reminder, here's what we got with the guide. I'll t place Arizona and all these other nations too. Or other paths for Arizona as well, eventually. The Bisbee Deportation. Drift to authoritarianism. Eventually, you'll we'll get an event about socialist up unrest rising and choose to ignore them. Stockpiling guns, defend the right to bear arms, and they continue. You know, cool. Cool. Extend martial law, drift authoritarianism. Rangers, not bad. Uh, the divisions were okay, they weren't great. National Guard's pretty decent. 18 combo, could have been better, but I hate militia. Militia's just so. Ugh. But restoration of democracy? Maybe. But maybe not. Well, let's see what we got here. Well, when it pops up. Because the car is doing very well so far. Western movie scene dawns. Is there to breathe the brush of fresh independent air? Society has begun to heal, and a sense of normalcy is once again settled in among the masses. As the regime still holds uh, or builds its picturesque vision of a frontier paradise, the culture too blossoms alive. The most popular aspect of this budding culture is reignited interest in the Wild West. Although many aspects of our culture have begun to adopt this whole cowboy way of life, none have adapted it so well as the new Western movie industry. With actors and directors beginning rising to become stars of the limelight while donning in spurred boots, panch, ponchos, Ponchos and 10 gallon hats like Gary Cooper, Jimmy Stewart, Lee Marvin, Paul Newman, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, Henry Fonda, uh, Jack Hoxie, Randolph Scott, Gene Autry, the director John Ford, Walter Brennan, Slim Pickens, and so many more talented faces, though our own leader was always kind of really partial to Roy Rogers, actually. Our people have no shortage of new movie stars fun over. Due to our push for desegregation, soft, and racial relations, the scene has also begun to be popular with many non Anglo stars like Osag Blood, 
Ben Johnson, the talented American Iron Eyes Cody, that's become infamous for his act of pretending to be indigenous for roles in movies and advertisements, and Mexicans or Mexican Americans like Rodolfo Acosta, Anthony Quinn, Gilbert Erlen, Alfonso Bedoya, and Spanish import Fernando Sancho, and the king of Ma Machismo, Emilio Fernandez, all contributing to the vi vibrant tapestry of this new entertained Wild West we are trying to build here. With, new, with a new lone gunman arriving on the scene with their big irons on their hips with each passing movie shoot, we are able to ride the steady stallion all the way to the top of the prime vehicles we will use to spread our council cowboy culture to the masses. yippee ki -yay, partner. Reform the SWLF militias. Southwest Liberation Front was still well equipped for the war against the Mexican occupiers, but now the fires died down, the SWLF has become something of an embarrassment. Standing with his rival to an army worth of Arizona, worthy of Arizona. Those units that underperform or refuse to reform will be dismissed and dealt with, and we no longer need such petty badness. Nice. Form an Air Force, increase arms production, really. Now, with reforming the SWLF into a FL into a capable fighting force, we've just seen how unequipped our, our gunsmiths are. But we were hoped to stand against Mexico, our old brothers in the Union. We must drastically increase weapons production. The sons of Arizona will not be left unarmed. Restoration or democracy. With a formal ceasefire between the provisional government and the Mexico government. Mexican government. There's been a dramatic increase in calls and the state of emergency and hold democratic sta stations or elections. Well, a lot of the voices coming from the former sta state senator, Robert Taylor Jones, who helped fund Goldwater's rebellion with his vast wealth gar gathered through pharmaceuticals. Jones insists that the only way an Arizona government can be le legitimate is the powers return to the state legislators and a governor is elected. A clique of Harlan officers within the SWLF, however, have proposed an alternative solution. Um... And to extend the state of emergency and expand Goldwater's powers and ensure that never again will Mexican boots stomp over Arizona's freedom. Well, Goldwater is aware that the Mexicans are still in the South, waiting for the perfect time to strike once more. He also knows that this decision will be received very poorly by the state legislature. Furthermore, he knows that the Southwest Liberation Front is made up of many different groups, some of which have openly supported the restoration of democracy were the state of emergency to be extended. It seems that there would be resistance. On the other hand, if this newly democratic government was too weak to resist the Mexican beast, all of his work would have been for nothing. Call for elections? Yeah, extend the state of emergency. Yeah. You never know. And there goes the Portuguese. Deportation in Bisbee. Today, news has broken out that outraged all of Arizona, even the world. In Bisbee, Arizona, the co local cop might have been shut down for some <clears throat> no, time due to the mass stri of striking workers. During the strike, Philip Dodge, of uh, the company that ran the mine, had presented a list of subversives and the supporters of Harry Wheeler, the head of the reformed Arizona Rangers. The list of 1,300 names not only included minors, but their families. We were then deputized a posse, lacking by a local press to more of a mob or an army of 2,000 bystanders, and at 6.30 in the morning, the deputies rapidly moved through the town, arresting all those on their list. The newly minted prisoners were then loaded on a cattle cars and taken to the border where they were then dumped in the middle of a desert, and told under no certain, mm, uncertain terms never to return to Bisbee. Phelps Dodge tried to keep the story suppressed by cutting communication in the town, but as the deportees arrived at a nearby settlement, word spread quickly. Over the deportees are given temporary housing and letters of the strongest condemnation are pouring into Phoenix. The president uh, stressed that this crime was a local matter, but pledged to open an investigation into the Rangers and to Dodge Phelps, or Phelps Dodge, and the incident itself. In the defense, Dodge denounced the deportees as a syndicalist revolutionaries and claimed without pressing evidence of a plot to overthrow their Arizona government. Bob Barrett, but not such as angry over rising authoritarianism. Oh, God. In reaction to Governor Goldwater's move towards a more authoritarian interpretation, interpretation of his right libertarian dream, socialist agitation began to increase across the Grand Canyon state. Despite Goldwater promising that his use of emergency powers are only temporary measures, Arizona transitions to a more lasting and stable government state of independence. These very leftists believe that this is simply the government's excuse to hide their true intentions of a total societal change as dictated by Goldwater alone. Fearing this existence of a total state tyranny, and so infuriated over the actions of the Arizona Rangers during the Bisbee deportation incident. His agitators have begun to band together under the banner of the PLM, IWW, International Coalition of Anarcho Communist Aligned Partido Liberal Mexicano, and the Anarcho Syndicalist Aligned Industrial Workers of the World, made up of the Mexicans, Americans, and indigenous citizens united behind their anarchist and agrarian vision of Arizona free of the state. Although, we could likely appease these Mexican American farmers, ranchers, and riders with a few token reforms and concessions aimed at improving the rights and working conditions of workers throughout the state while also granting them small amounts of communal autonomy. Most of the hardliners and conservatives within the government demand a harsh hardline stance. Well, she, should we pursue this policy of appeasement, or should we take a harsh stance against Arizona socialism? Appeasing? Hit the road, Jack. We got bigger fish to fry. The Rangers tried again. During Goldwater's rebellion, there was a small band of riders who adopted the name of the old Arizona Rangers. They rode through the smaller villages that SWLF was too busy to clear, riding from Yuma to Bisbee and forcing the Mexicans out of their occupied border towns. Who never officially recognized as Rangers during the war, there's a growing need for a quick response unit within the Arizona military. Now the war is coming to close. We never know when the perfidious Mexicans will attempt to cross the border once again, and with the government's obsession with natural, national security, perhaps a small, well trained, and flexible task force of riders is exactly what we need. Soldiers on horseback will be able to navigate trails and that tanks and troop transports will never be able to cross. Though, in the past, Rangers 
uh, pass. Rangers number no more than 30 at a given time. That simply won't be enough for the skill of what we're facing. The native, the new Arizona Rangers will be scouted to 200 active members at any given time. Though there will be candidates constantly being considered. We've already have a spot picked out to house and train them. Fort Hauchuka, a mere 30 miles away from the old Rangers, Alpos and Nako. From this fortified position, they'll patrol the Arizona wildlands like the heroes of old. Something old meets something new. And in the Arizona Constitution. When Arizona was prepared to join the Union in 1911, the National College Convention discussed what would be included in the state constitution. Now that Arizona's gained its freedom from the Mexican occupier, it seems only logical that the Senate and the legislature should come together and draft the new Arizona Constitution, one that truly represents the hopes and dreams of our new independence nation. As our it's a complex task that has left us searching for more someone more qualified for the job, though talented, Barry Goldwater is no political mastermind, and seemed fit to delegate to someone much more prestigious. The man chosen to carry out this task was none other than Henry Ashurst. The man who oversaw the creation of the first Arizona Constitution, and when Arizona was truly brought into the Union, Arizona's first senator. Theoretically, so, along with Goldwater, along Democratic lines, Ashurst uh, defies political classifications, express a willingness to work with both sides, ensure a legal and fair Constitution. We would be hard pressed to find a candidate more qualified to oversee the creation of our Constitution in such uh, a political climate. Ashurst's middle of the road way, uh, way of thinking will ensure that neither side boycotts the convention uh, twice in a lifetime experience. Nice. New economy? Much of our industry was burned in the flames of the occupation. If we wish to restore any prosperity to a new state, what was that like a capital namesake? The Phoenix, the rise from the ashes. Old dogs? New tricks. Or said you couldn't teach an old dog new tricks, it clearly never been put under enough duress. Our experience fighting large Mexican conscript forces had convinced the general staff that a more fluid way of work would be just as effective as a conventional tactics. So she was caught amassing arms. Oh no. It seems that uh, our decision to pursue a hardline stance against the rising socialist agitators that have backfired reports of PLM IWW sales being caught stockpiling arms and supplies from coming across America, Arizona. From a mold, caches of rifles and explosives one hit it, once hit him, and crevices in the Grand Canyon, and the Beaver Dam Mountains to supply sheds filled with ammo and small arms being found in cellars in Phoenix and T Tucson. These weapons. Uh, dumps are being found more and more frequently as socialists all across the nation. Scroll away their arms in preparation for potential mass uprising and revolution, though a few Bill of Rights and Fundamentals are still defending the right to bear arms for those angry radicals. Most with common sense have begun to demand the Gold War take immediate action against these leftists as they round up more support for the cause through mass action, lip itinerary, or literary pandering and propaganda of the deed. Should we move to ban the PLM IWW to take action against ourselves, or should we defend the right to bear arms and protest and hope for the best? On the water and mineral rights of Navajo. Navajo and the other local Amer Indian tribes of our region such as the Apache, Hopi, Uta, Zuni, Pima, and various Pueblo peoples have long been a contentious, contentious topic in the American Southwest. The largest reservation in America, the Navajo Nation, lies at the center of the Four Corners, where Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and all intersect at the exact point, and other tribal lands dot the rest of our infantile nation. Though many Native Americans aided us in our fight for independence against the Mexicans, many more still aided the Me Mexicans instead, for their southern neighbors have been known to treat indigenous peoples of the Americas far better than we Americans have in recent decades as such. The atmosphere has grown tense between the Anglo Arizonans and our native neighbors, and things have only begun to get worse. A long standing issue of the Native Americans' mineral and water rights have come up once again now that Arizona is a free state. The Navajo have long been distrustful of the Americans and have long been one of the most resistant indigenous groups against American expansion, refusing many treaties and deals in the past. The issue not that now plagues us is the Navajo Nation sits on a large amount of mineral wealth, for their land is full of valuable ore like coal and uranium, as well as ore, oil, and other bounties of the earth. Pair with this issue are the water rights, which particularly affect the Pima and Pueblo peoples of the desert regions of the air's, this arid land. There exist large natural water reservoirs that have long been tapped and siphoned by American communities. The mere Indian terms are simple. They wish to maintain their sovereign mineral and water rights and are not willing to negotiate on it. In return, they will in integrate into our states as, as voting citizens, though most likely will keep to their tribal lands. They give us partial access to the minerals and water wealth, but deny us full sense of the slice of the pie. We could revoke these special rights instead and guarantee the full bounty of the land, but uh, getting them, but likely incurring the wrath once more, which you just do. Hmm. We want to choose the ones that are opted to freedom. A land for a Mexican American. Oh wow. We will rejoin with America the game will end for Arizona. A land for the cowboy. Rangers ruled over Arizona. That's really cool. For the Battle of War sparks a light. Greater Arizona. Oh, that sounds really cool. A land for Mexican American though. You get a core on everything. Jesus Christ. That's actually really cool. Furious over a decision that would deny them of their, wi their whites. Their water minimal, mineral rights. The Navajo leader, or Navajo, and their indigenous allies have banded together in a council of fire coalition of uh, the Southwestern tribes under the command of the tribal chairman of the Navajo Nation, Chi Dodge. 
and a wartime party, including the Apache, the Hopi, the Pima, and Pueblo peoples, the Uta, the Zuni, Hopi, and even a few Comanche that live in the western New Mexico. These American Indian freedom fighters have taken up arms against European colonizers for the fourth major time in history. The vote has been quickly dubbed by international onlookers as the Fourth Naval War, and both sides are now prepared for all-out war, only months after the first gaining our independence. First against the Spanish, then against Mexicans, then against Americans, and now against the Arizonans. History's come knocking once again for the Naval let loose the Anaji war cry, and all shall soon know what the, ra the wrath of the Red Man. Not sure national identity. Oh crap, they actually have unique focus to too, huh? Well, okay, that's different. One second here, y'all, and I'll type in Navajo save. More Navajo War sparks a lot, of course. Give us a little more time, and we'll do that. The red Mesa runs red with the revolution. Oh. Well then. Our decision not to stop the socialists is to talk about our arms and plan for a mass uprising is forced to backfire. For the PLM IWW has declared a mass strike and total revolution against the Goldwater regime and the so called regime of the state tyranny. Taking the capital gunpoint after bloody fire by the Arizona Rangers, the socialists have been successful as Goldwater and his men are arrested and to be executed pending few trials while the syncretic anarchist government of the PLM, uh, IWW leader Fernando Palomares and Rosendo Dormam, Dorheim, and their workers' congress rise to command in Arizona. Hell bent on turning down the state in order to create a communal. Communalist uh, paradise built along anarcho syndicalist and anarcho communist principles based on the ideas of French Jacobins. The American Wobblies and the IWW and the Magan Brothers, Doram and Palomares, will not rest until the proletariat of Arizona are free and prosperous within a socialist utopia. The Red Roadrunner dashes towards a revolution. Wow. Oh my god, look at that. So handsome. Give us a couple days. Oh, and we need a new uh, army leader, huh? Theodore Roosevelt Jr., really? He's a sinner? Oh, Oscar Griswold, huh? Uh, he's politically connected. I'm gonna go with this guy. He can have more divisions there. Um, leader experience gain, promotion cost. Air commander, that's not bad. Uh, Archibald. Archibald? Nice. Oh, we won here too. Well, I'll read about that in just a little bit. Let's do this other place first. Mm, I'll see. The PLM IWW rise out. The Partido Liberal Mexicano, Industrial Workers of the World Coalition, a syncretic and international self libertarian organization led by Mexican American and indigenous socialist leaders, Rosendro Doram and Fernando Palomares, that fuses the Maganism, Jacobinism, anarcho communism, agrarianism, and dedication to social democracy of the Mexican Liberal Party with anarcho syndicalism and industrial unionism of the IWW, wrapped in a cowboy communalist skin that emphasizes a frontiersman lifestyle, environmentalism, and rural communitarianism and decentralization. Or decentralized leftist communalism tied together with a direct democracy and left libertarian views of societal freedom under a socialist night watchman's state. I say control of Arizona and coup against the libertarian turn authoritarian bear of water. Now Rosendo Doram and Fernando Palomares will bring their unique anarchist revolution to Arizona while attempting to stay true to their syncretic ideas while trying to strike a balance between the syndicalists, wobblies, and communist firebrands that dominate their international coalition of Mexican American indigenous radicals and farmers. That's a lot of words. I prefer the cowboys by themselves. Actually, do we lose attack on core territory? Nice. Santa Fe gonna be ours. Nice. A face for the PLM IWW. With the group now in control of Arizona's destiny, a direction for the revolution must, of course, be decided upon. In theory, we shall always remain a syncretic group of loyal to both anarcho-syndicalism and anarcho-communism in equal measure, but reality is often different than theory, and it's likely that one side of a party line will be favored based on an elected executive. If uh, Rosendo Doram has made the face of the coalition, it can be suspected that the Maganos Jacobin faction, more dedicated anarcho-communism, will dominate while Fernando Palomares is made leader. It can be assumed that the anarcho-syndicalist faction will rise to dominance instead. 
The Ram is more of an academic theorist that dictates away the revolution from on high, while Palomeras prefers to get his hands dirty and will help spread the revolution himself with the true propaganda of the deed. But both are experienced um, literary masters, and both are dedicated to a syncretic anarchist ideal. However, we can instead continue to stand behind the faces of Workers' Congress, the PLM IWW, staying totally loyal to the demands of a democratic anarchist communist or the vision and plan of any singular leader. What should you decide? I don't know. I just go faceless. If we don't choose one, do we, can we still choose this? Well, let's take a look see in the path guys first. Pick your leader. So, as SOC Dem, Social Democrats, you, formable you guess based on which focus you focus, focus in the middle of the tree. We'll go with that one for now. If we don't like it, maybe we'll change it, but we'll see. The grass light, the last great mountain man. American legends passed from his life, Benjamin Vernon Lilly. Wow, man. Spiritualism veteran of the Arizona Independence War has been found dead at the age of 84. He remained a strong and fierce hunter. Passing through the Arizona territories when fighting broke out, he lent his considerable trekking experience to the SWLF as a scout. When his wife gave up his hunting mission to aid the revolution, he claimed that anyone can hunt a bear. It takes a man to hunt a Mexican. When peace talks with the Mexican government ended, he retired to Green Lee Mountain Range, where he was found by several members of the newly reformed Arizona Rangers. Ocean, to pay their respects as a curious man. Lily, ill at ease with civilized life, chose to live in the wilds, living off what he could hunt and trout, once claiming that property is a handicap to man. He preferred to live a severely threadbare life. When he died, he possessed only a thick, bearskin-bound Bible, dried cougar meat, an axe and self-made lily knife, a model of 1886 Winchester, and various animal uh, talismans. An ardent Christian, Lily claimed to be on a mission from God to rid of miracle of evil beasts, so seriously he did this duty that he refused to hunt on Sundays. Abstained from all alcohol and did not smoke. In his mission, he was deeply successful. Keep, killing more than a thousand bears and mountain lions in his entire lifetime, only his beloved hounds to keep him company. The Republic legislators decided against the state funeral, entering the white wild man in the secluded mountains in which he made his living. Reverend Jack H. Zollner gave him his last rites. A few friends, a trapper, had remained gathered in a small town of Clifton as lay a bronze tablet to his memory. This is beyond a widow, three sisters, a brother, and two children. The last enemy to be destroyed is death itself. How much manpower do they have? They have none. As soon as they do recover, it's going to be very costly, just like it's being very costly for us. But we're doing okay right now, surprisingly. Ish. Got one. Keep the keep fight going. Just grind him down. That's all you can do right now is just grind. Oh, they lost another division? Oh, hold on. No, 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 no. You do not let stop the attack. You cannot stop the attack. Oh, it's sick and wounded, huh? Oh, they lost two more divisions. Just a matter of time. It's, it's costly. But it's worth it in the end. New Rangers, old faces. As news of the Reformation, the Arizona Rangers began to spread across America. It seems like likely uh, a few old veterans would return. I've only seen these new Rangers were worthy of the name. But no one could expect it. Everyone's the return of Thomas H. Riney. Former captain of the Rangers, a rough rider, and veteran of the Spanish American War, riding had long since Arizona for retirement in California, but when the old rider heard that the Rangers were being recommissioned, he had no choice but to make the trek. After examining the Rangers, he put forth his offer to the government. He ordered the return of duty at the Ranger HQ in Sierra Vista, acting as an instructor as well as an advisor of the newly formed Arizona government at 70s. The old cowboy was not as sharp as he once was, but his experience patrolling the Mexican border would be invaluable. Perhaps it would be wise to take advice from an old man in a profession where men often die young. An American hero returned to service. Building a truly stateless democracy. Beautiful. Arizona rules the waves. Though a war of Mexico may be over, we can't breathe easy just yet. The wave men patrol on the border, that doesn't mean we are secure. A landlocked state, Arizona has historically never been requiring a navy to defend itself, but with the Mexicans intent on destroying us forever, we have begun to see the unprotected Colorado River as an undefended front. Using Colorado, they could sail up the coastline, attack wherever they desire, and retreat to their ships before we could respond. To this end. 
The PLMIWW popular assemblies authorized the seizure of several mothball ferry boats and gloated them with cannons and placed former state legislator and riverboat captain Nellis T. Bush in command, giving her the title of Admiral of Arizona's Navy. With not a formidable force and surely no match for the Mexican warships, enable to ensure that the flag of Arizona flies high over the Colorado and that the Mexican bandit forces stay on their side of the water. We love Arizona seamen. That we do. Free communes of Arizona. Train. Building a truly stateless democracy. Well, the leadership debate between the Doram and Palam are settled as the two decide to work together in service of true anarchist and democracy. The PLMIW is a party and is a public organization that rules the nation collectively. However, the party does not <clears throat> do uh, so lay out any devotion to their own theory or political biases, but by the will of the proletariat alone. Through referendums and direct democratic elections, we shall ensure that only the will of the people matters and not the selfish ambitions and designs of career politicians and out-of-touch theorists. However, the spans begin to stall as we debate one final point each month, the, the group's popular assembly. Firmly, the Temporary Workers' Congress that we hastily created during the outbreak of the revolution is to meet in order to regulate and organize the runnings of our stateless society, but how ministers for this body should be chosen is following the endless debate. The anarcho-syndicalists, biased to support in their unions, argue that individual communes, um, unions, ejidos, Ranches and other anarchist communities and organizations that make up our new society should be able to elect their own ministers from among their own people. Well, the anarcho communists argue that the party itself should be unbiased to determine the, minister, determine the ministers themselves, likely clinging on to other minor ideas of vanguardism. Between them stands a truly unbiased group that believes the ministers should be elected at random through anonymous drawings in order to compromise between the two groups without yielding to either side of their preferred theory. Well, who should we side with? A radical socialism, huh? Communists like them with term limits. Syndicalism, radicalism. Party alone has the power to determine ministers. Totalism, democracy. We're going to go with this one. The last of the Navajo. With the last of the Amer Na Amer Indian force finally crushed, or forced to surrender, the fourth Navajo war is finally coming to an end. Uh, though Chi Dodge, Ira Hayes, and the Unity Coalition of Southwestern Tribes put up a strong fight, they were no match for supreme tactics and technology, nor could their braves stand up to the might of our proud rangers. With the peace treaty being penned, we must decide to our terms, though we are free to demand what we please due to the instability to strong arm any future negotiations. We can either grant amnesty to their leaders, in other words, as we integrate their lands and leave them with the token amounts of autonomy to appease their traditions. Alternatively, we can forego all respect for these savages and move to annihilate their autonomy and their identity. Unless should be considered Arizonans, or they will forego the right to live on these lands. To be harsh, we would ensure us a full bounty of their land, but we also cause great unrest for some. Perhaps it would be wise to ensure some modern autonomy keep internal stability. What should we do? I'd like to do this one, but we're going to go with this one. They have learned the lesson already. Be civil in the integration. Get Barry Goldwater again, even though we kicked him out. That'd be funny. Um, guns and butter. Yeah, I usually like that one. Maybe they focus on that land doctrine there. Well, we'll do this one next as well. Because eventually we'll do a land for Mexican-American. With the roots in both America and Mexico, the PLM, IWW, feels that it has claim to both nations and they're failing a revolutionary regimes. Marching out from the American Southwest towards Washington and Mexico City, a coalition seeks to bring your unique and syncretic breed of anarchism to the world. So let us carry out the dream of the Magum Brothers and Bill, Big Bill Haywood as we soldier on for the liberation of North America. Real ranchers and fertile lands. Political power gain. Ooh. Justice for false promises of liberty. Riding away in the prison cell since our coup, Goldwater and the rest of his lackeys must be dealt with. Though there can be no hope for the man of gold and water and other stubborn leaders of the dying order like Jones and his failed Democratic Party, perhaps the rest of their less fanatic peons could be of use regardless. The proletariat of Arizona have the justice against the perpetrators of state tyranny. New economy, not bad. But not great. It hurts our cities, which we don't have many of already. Rural ranching and fertile fields. If we're to win over the masses and spread a socialist ideology without collapsing, we must show results. Arizona gets its money from its agricultural produce. As, and as agrarian socialists, this is supposedly our speciality. We must apply our brand of syncretic anarcho syndicalist anarcho communist communi communalism, and agrarianism in order to build a ranch and farm network that is not only profitable, excuse me, profitable and plentiful, but one also cares for its workers and all that they require and desire, desire in order to live peacefully, productive, and happy lives. Die the Rangers Red. The Arizona Rangers must be brought to heel if we will truly take a hold of Arizona. Leaders like Harry C. Wheeler must be either be re educated, if possible, or executed or not, and the organization must be infused with the leftist ideology wholeheartedly as party loyalists flood the ranks and rapidly replace the stubborn, conservative, and even reactionary old guard. Through blood and sweat under the hot sun, the Rangers shall be dyed a deep and royal crimson no matter the cost so they can be utilized as a paramilitary and secret police arm of the PLM, odd WW. Let me know in the comments below. Should we do a regeneration of the humble striker? 
Or should you ignite the trail of powder with action? This one reads, The chief exec representative of the Maginus, Jacobins, and other anarcho-communists have dominated a majority of the PLMIWW. Fernando Palomares has been elected for him within the party to gather revolution going forward. No to his call as literary works ate trail powder, waiting to be ignited with the action and public revolutionary deeds so that it may explode and inspire the masses. Palomares practices the propaganda of the deed over the simple and safe and rhetoric and theory preferred by his good friend Doram, implementing his insurrectionist and synthesis, anarchist, ideology through his own hands as he personally aids in tearing down the old order when not battling the Arizona Congress. Palomares leans more into anarchism, uh, communist agrarianism, and Magnus Jacobin principles over this group holding greater ties to Mexico and France over the CSA while putting syndicalism on the backburn. Though committed to syndicalism and theory, unionist concerns shall take a backseat as Palomares guides Arizona towards anarcho-communism. Or should we do this one? Chief representative of the Syndicalist Wobblies, that dominate half of the PLMIWW, Rosendo Doram, has been elected from within the party to guide the revolution going forward. A former writer for the PLM party magazine, Regeneracion, back when he worked in Mexico more permanently for, before his time on the road. Uh, Doram may hold a place in his heart for the PLM in principle, but in practice he has not. He has taken fully to the IWW, its Syndicalist message, and its American origins. A knowledgeable writer and theorist in the fields of platformist and orga organizationalist anarcho syndicalism Again, socialism and industrial unionism, the army pay lip service to anarcho communism desires, but has fully fallen in with the cynicalist demands. Fernand worked from afar while keeping his own hands clean, unlike his partner and close friend Palomares. The Ram will comfortably and peacefully work within the new democratic system or process. And away from the front lines as he creates an anarcho syndicalist workers' utopia. Let me know which one we should do in the comments below. But I think I'll end the episode there. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as, uh, we'll see what we can do and continue with the free communes of Arizona. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.